and welcome to Getting Started with WorkCenter. This video will introduce you to one of the most commonly used modules in AgilePoint, the WorkCenter. This is a module that most every user will interact with on a daily basis to access their applications and manage their work. Users who are accessing AgilePoint for the first time will fall in love with the modern WorkCenter experience. However, we recognize that many customers coming from prior versions of AgilePoint may want to stay with the classic WorkCenter interface for some time. It is for this reason that we have implemented controls that offer flexibility as to when the new look and feel is rolled out. So to control this, let's first go to the settings module. Now within settings, my first icon here on the left is for WorkCenter settings. I'm going to navigate over to the classic Work Center settings. And let's scroll all the way to the bottom. Now there are two toggles here that we'll discuss. As a tenant administrator, you can control the default Work Center experience for the entire organization. As you can see down below, I have Modern selected, but for previous customers of older versions of Agile Point, you may want to start with the classic experience. If you'd like to give users the ability to swap between the modern and the classic work center experience, I would simply hit this toggle here and our users can choose from their work center. Having covered those settings, let's go back to the work center and we'll go through the widgets that you're seeing here on screen. Starting with the overview, I have a task overview here showing me tasks by status. In my case, I have seven that are overdue, one that's currently assigned to me, and one in a new status. By new status, I mean that this task is assigned to a group of users and can be claimed if I have the bandwidth. Down below, you're seeing estimated time to complete. This is analyzing my past performance and giving me a rough estimate to clear all of the work items that are currently assigned to me. Under the task summary view, I can see when tasks are coming due. In my case, nothing in the next hour, but I do have one task due over the next day as well as one over the next week. Under the tasks due this week section, I can see how many tasks are coming due on a particular day. Moving down, you're seeing another new widget here called My Plan Tasks and this gives me an ability to plan out my day. If I click the plus icon here, you'll see that there are three types of items that I can add to my planner. The first of which is an Agile Point task, something that I absolutely must take care of today. So to do this, I'm going to hit my drop-down list here, and you'll see that I have a task for my HR review. So I'll give this task a name. and then I can schedule it for a convenient time. Let's click Save and New. This time, we're going to set a reminder to launch a new submission. So here, I've selected Application, and from the drop-down list, I'm going to select the application that I must initiate today. And lastly, is a note to myself. Now, this has nothing to do with Agile Point, but again, simply an item that I must take care of today. So let's select note to self. I know I have a dentist appointment coming up, so I'm going to leave that note to myself here. Give my task a name. And let's schedule this for next Monday morning. Okay, so now I've set three different types of tasks that I must complete today. If I click on the gear, I can go ahead and see that in a calendar view. You can see not only the tasks that I have set for myself today, but also what's coming up next week and everything that I've done over the past month. Now, as you can see at the top here, I can toggle this through different months or different years. I can have a day view as an example, or even add new items directly from my calendar. Scrolling down here, you'll see a list of frequently used applications, as well as a link to all available applications. 
We're going to cover this in more detail here in just another moment. And then finally here, recent tasks and recent requests or submissions. These are tasks that have been allocated to me within the past 24 hours. So as you can see here, I have a pending vehicle request. I can view the process. This is going to bring up a real-time view of the process as it stands today. You can see by the spinning wheel here that that supervisor approval task is currently active. And I can always drill into the task and see additional details the name of the task, the status, when it hit my desk, and when it became overdue, and in my case, the fact that it has yet to be completed. If I go over to the Participants tab here, you can see that this task is currently allocated to me. I have had one session on this task, and again, has yet to be completed. And there are two actions that I can take here directly from the Process Viewer, the first of which is opening up the task and completing the work item and the second of which is reassigning this task to a colleague of mine. Moving over to recent requests, this is showing me process instances that I've launched within the last day. Now I have a similar set of options here as well as one additional capability that I'll speak to. So taking the vehicle request as an example, again I have the ability to view the process, I can view the report view or show all of the data that's been entered into this application at this point in time. And then lastly, I have the ability to clone this request. This is going to be helpful if you repetitively work with the same sorts of applications, entering similar sorts of data. Uh, this is going to take all of the data values that I've entered into my previous submission and copy it over to a new process instance. Okay, so that concludes the overview. Let's get into the inbox here, and we'll start with tasks. Now you're seeing here that Agile Point has now moved to a card style layout. If there's a particular task that I'd like to target, I can always search for it by name. As you can see here, I can search by process instance name as well as by process model name in addition to the name of the task. I have a variety of views here as an example, and depending on my role within the organization, I may see some of these and not others. Every user will see my tasks. Team leads have their own view, as do department heads and end-level managers. For my immediate work group, my peers, as well as all tasks. And again, keep in mind that this is easily security trimmed based on your role or position within the organization. I can group my tasks based on various criteria. As you can see here, the default view is by status, but I also have options by priority as well as grouping by process. And for those of you who are more comfortable working with a grid style layout, as you can see, I can easily hit the toggle and bring up my tasks in a grid view. Now for any one of these here, you're seeing I have a number of actions that I can take. View the process, open the task, reassign it to someone else, and then when I click on the ellipses here, you'll see additional, less commonly used actions. Things like canceling a process or a rework, releasing a task back to the pool, seeing details about the task, adding an ad hoc task to this process instance, canceling the task, as well as adding this to my watch list or to the planner. Now if I go back out of the grid view here, you'll see that I have similar sets of options here using my card style layout, viewing the process, opening the task, reassignment, and the same options under the ellipses. Now for this marketing manager approval task, this is showing in a status of new, which means that this task has been assigned to a group of users. So this task has yet to be uh, taken. So what I can do here is just drag this into my queue. It's gonna drop off my colleague's task list here. And if I decide I don't have time to work on this, I can just go ahead and grab this and release it back to the pool.
So let's take a look at processes here. And this is going to give me insight into all of the work items that either I have started or I have participated in in the past. Now similarly, I still have the same search capabilities. Searching my process model, process instance name as an example. And then I can toggle between two views, processes that I have started or simply a process that I have participated in. For managers, you can easily get visibility into your team's work items using the same views that we showed you just a moment ago. I can filter based on various statuses here, and again, bring back the grid view from a prior version of Agile Point. So let's go into my applications. As you can see here by default, I have a frequently used apps view but I can always see a list of all of the applications that I have permission to. I have the same search capabilities that you've grown used to and can also take advantage of the category groupings that have been introduced in Agile Point version 8. From a filters perspective, I can sort by alphabetical or by release date or simply filter out a certain type of application, process or form-based applications. So this brings us to delegations. With a delegation, I can send my tasks to a colleague of mine if I'm going to be out of the office. So to set up a delegation, I would click the button in the top right hand corner, and I would say, okay, send all of the tasks that are currently directed to the system admin to Lucas, as an example. Now, if our admin is going out of town, for instance, I can write a brief description and then easily specify when the delegation should apply. So in my case, let's just do it for a couple of days. I will activate the delegation. And then optionally, I can specify the days of the week that this delegation should apply. Now this could be for all days or just for a couple of days as an example. Under external applications, I can bring in apps that are addressable via URL. So to do that, I would click Add here in the top right hand corner. My application here is going to be the Google search engine. This is going to be a URL, so I'll bring in the Google URL. We'll have this open in a new tab, and I'll give it an icon. And then lastly here are user productivity statistics. What this shows me is insight at a task and a process level, my own productivity, as well as the productivity of my team, if applicable. As you're seeing here, I have a quick view of the statuses of the various items that are currently allocated to me, as well as how quickly I have turned these tasks over. So for instance here, you can see that this task took me three days to complete whereas others maybe just took a single day. If I want to go back in time here and see how my productivity compares, say, to a couple of months back, for instance, I can simply select another month, another year, as applicable. On the top right-hand corner here, you're seeing the default task views. So every user should see their own productivity under My Tasks, but again, depending on your role or position within the organization, you may see the productivity of your team, your department, any sub-teams, or your immediate work group, for instance. And then lastly here, similar insights at the process layer. Right? So showing all of the process statistics by status. And again, how long is it taking for these particular tasks, or processes rather, to complete? Okay, that concludes the content of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.